All right. I'm going to run everyone at DJNA, my particular company, through getting the best out of the beginning in install of Civil 3D 2022. This is our new go-to software of this, of this last year, starting in 2022, going into 2023 now. Um, we have the most licenses, licensing for it overall as a company, and it's just our next upgrade. I'm going to go through a lot of the nuts and bolts. A little bit of a deeper dive, but also you can fast forward around in the video to see things you need and want. Everything from what I like to do for my user interface to how to arrange things to uh, pathing, which uh, our IT department, myself or Shane, will help you path. Hopefully on your initial install, you don't have to do that. But it is good to know where those files are, how to change those pathings, and in case you need to reset AutoCAD or a version of Civil 3D or AutoCAD to default. Sometimes it gets a little bit messed up and you need to uninstall, reinstall. There's also some handy commands I've been using when I get a gummed up AutoCAD um, version. I have been doing this here lately, reset settings to default. has been a nice uh, alternative to uninstalling fully and reinstalling fully to if I got a really a lot of times the most errors happen on startup or you have a lot of add-ins but this is a good tool i've been using to clean up without having to re reinstall everything but it does wipe out a lot of your settings and your and your graphic user interface so and that's with every version i have a few different versions of civil 3d i even have 20 30, 23 at the moment um but let's get started with the install so go to the it department first to do this the majority of times so Shane can look at all we have he generally will run a couple ex executables um, for Autodesk Civil 3D 2022 which will install regular AutoCAD it'll install a metric version we're gonna mainly use the Civil 3D Imperial version and then there's a couple big ex executable files he has tucked away in our local N drive downloads Autodesk 2022 programs let Shane do this for the most part but if he's busy certain, certain certain uh, users are maybe a little more savvy you might be able to do it on your own reach out to your IT department first um, and for all of us designers or whoever does design concurrently after you initially install 2022 civil 3d I would highly recommend to install vehicle tracker too and that's just for me main, mainly it, it's an add-in add on top of 2022 I already have it installed here with some other add-ins I use, like Super Purge and Info Drainage and Sync Pack for survey stuff. Uh, but Vehicle Tracker is an Autodesk add-in that a lot of us use to design, and it's very version specific. So it doesn't like to go back and forward a version, or especially back a version. So it's one of the few things with different installs of Civil 3D that is has proven to be very version specific that a lot of us use. Um, other add-ins can be the same way. They're very case-by-case -case basis, but in general, the backwards and forwards compatibility is very good on Civil 3D drawings between 2023 and 2017. There's a few little caveats to that, but in general, it's very forward and backward compatible between those these current six years, uh, minus a few things like vehicle tracker and some, some things with the survey database. Um, so I have this version of Civil 3D 2022 already installed. It generally starts like this. And it has kind of your tool space over here. It has your um, some of your other tools over here that are now in the ribbon called the transparent commands. I will show you some what I do with those in a second. Um, going back to the N drive, so that's this is after these have installed. Definitely get with the ID, IT department. They'll know the best service packs and upgrades for different versions a little more in tune than most users to install with the initial install, that's one of your main reasons I would recommend going through the IT department every time for uh, new installs of 2022. Um, if you go to the web, the web, there's, this is a lot where a lot of these downloads come from on the general industry. There's an education page for education software that I use sometimes for teaching, but this is more for general industry and we'll download these from here. Civil 3D, we have Grading optimization and Project Explore and some other things that we've dabbled into using. Uh, basic AutoCAD, a lot of the BIM collaboration tools and docs, um, Revit's in here, InfraWorks, a fair amount of programs that a lot of us aren't familiar with yet, but we 
do have availability to some of them. Get with IT on that to see what we have licensing for. But this is mostly focused on civil 3D stuff and vehicle tracker. Um, so here's the general page that those come from. We go back, we're fully installed. Let's start with going over the user interface real quick. Everyone has their preferences with AutoCAD. Um, I've met very few people that don't. And when you shake up their preferences, uh, you know, sometimes the world crumbles, but we get used to, we're creatures of habit. We get used to where we're used to seeing things if we use the software for a while. So quick review, um, it's very ribbon based. I'll show you a couple things I like to do with respect to the ribbon and making it a little more hybrid. Uh, one of the first things I do is I take these transparent tool toolbars and I just I eliminate them. Um, they're in the ribbon now. I don't know why they, this might be just a bug. Don't need those anymore. Um, they are now embedded in the ribbon up here. And these are basically ways to draw and draft polylines and various things, circles, whatever you can think of, points, dots, not dots, but any general AutoCAD feature with respect to drawing it with stations and station elevations, grade lengths, um, giving it an angle, maybe it's in degrees, minutes, seconds, and then a distance or bearing distance. It's different ways to do very uh, civil and land surveying like functions to drawing things like just like poly polylines, for example. I use it sometimes. Uh, I don't think it gets used a ton, but depending how much you draft in a very civil or survey nomenclature, this is a nice ribbon add-in. Um, generally, you'll have the Home tab, Insert, Annotate, Modify, Analyze, View, Manage, Output, Survey, Rail, Transparent. This one, I have InfraWorks because I have it installed. You probably won't have that most of the times until you do InfraWorks. Collaborate should be on there, Help, Add-ins, and I have some various other add-ins here. You should have the Express Tools, and hopefully most of you designers and engineers, anyone who may need vehicle tracking gets this installed after the initial install of 2022. Um, and you probably likely have featured apps, which is a way to go find apps in the app store. Um, another way is to go through here, add-ins or online. Um, we're not gonna cover that in this video, a little out of scope, but I generally like leave the ribbon alone in its tabs and in its individual panels. Uh, I've kind of gotten I've gotten accustomed to it. I like a few things in tool toolbars. I'll get to that in a second. How to pop in toolbars, a few handy things like styles and layers. Um, we have our view cube over here, which flips and rotates. Uh, I love having this available. Um, I don't use it all the time, but it is a nice dynamic 3D tool. Um, we have here our UCS dynamicness, which also you can access. In areas up here in the view, um, we have our navigation wheel, um, our navigation bar. I might be missing that, um, mispronouncing that. Um, I don't use this all the time. It has a view cube. It's uh, kind of my navigation bar. I usually leave it alone. If you if you get rid of it, um, it's not really overly utilized. Um, if you happen to turn these things off by accident, uh, don't even really know how to turn this one off easily, which is probably a good thing. Um, but you can turn them on and off in the view. There's lots of handy things in this view. Uh, ribbon, ribbon panel, or ribbon tab with panels. Uh, most of this stuff you can turn on and off here. Uh, I always leave the UCS on, that is so handy. I move it around, draft on different planes and lines depending on with respect to what I'm drafting on. I use this all the time to make sure it's orientated to world or not to world. View cube, this is how you can turn that back on and off. I didn't know how to do the right click method here. Um, not a big deal. Sometimes you might have it gone though and you want to turn it back. Here's how you do that in the navigation bar as well. Um, I leave all these on as is. These are generally pretty handy the way they are. This is ways to configure multiple viewports in one drawing. So maybe you have an assembly, you look at here, a profile view here, and plan view here. Um, I don't have a drawing link because this is my initial install. Um, a lot of times I'm on single view though. And here's some of my UCS stuff. This is a quick way to turn on some toolbars. 
um, old-fashioned toolbars. When they got taken away, some people uh, lost their minds. But generally, um, people have gotten pretty accustomed to just the ribbon now and in contextual ribbons and finding things in more logical fashion. These were the old Vanguard of AutoCAD. And they look like this, toolbars. So I like turning a couple of them on. Um, you know, and some people, they have their preferences. They, they've drafted a certain way for so long, they got to turn a bunch of them on. Um, I've kind of gotten away from them. I like turning on a few, like, layers. Uh, for the main handiness of being able to pop through layers and turn them on and draft and make lay current, but mostly for this, this pull-down menu. That's one I still like to bring in. Uh, there's probably others you like to bring in, but that's definitely one. AutoCAD Styles. I really like to bring that one in, too. So that one is down here. And that lets me pop between, this is not a template, it's a blank AutoCAD uh, Civil 3D DWG, so it doesn't have a lot in it. But it lets me go between my M-Tech styles, my dimension styles, my AutoCAD table styles, my AutoCAD M-Leader styles. And these are the very most common for AutoCAD style annotations. They're not Civil 3D styles. They're two different things. Um, not really in the scope of this video, but... These are really handy little pull downs. I like using them so much more than going into annotate and grabbing them here. Um, it's preference, but there's, these are my two favorite uh, tabs to, or toolbars to still have in this new ribbon world. Um, we have our view controls up here. These generally stay. This is how you go between different renderings. Uh, generally, we're mostly in top view, but sometimes I will use this to go to side, left, isometric. Same as the view cube. They work kind of co-independently. Um, our, our command bar. I like it kind of like this now. I've gotten used to it. Some people like to drag it in the bottom. At times, I like to have it like this to have at least three layers of text. Um, so they stay permanently. For example, if I draw like a polyline and I do something like CG list... It's also in my inquiry tab, but I just type the alias. It gives me some information here. And when I hit escape, you know, that keeps filing in commands. I like to sometimes have those available permanently so I can copy paste them, whether it's a bearing or a distance or some other inquiry. So there's reason to have this the way it is to, to your preference. I like having it like this sometimes too for there's less real estate taking up my screen and my, um, my workspace, my work area here, and model space. So if I do CG list again, it shows it, but it's going to be, it's going to fade away when I hit escape. It's going to be temporary. So as I move around, it eventually fades away. But you can go here to the right, the command history, it's still here. So I like having this new real estate. Once I started using this little button here to just pop it up, okay, I copy this distance to spreadsheet or something or whatever reason, uh, or this bearing of that polyline. So that's that's this, the command bar. Um, you can turn it off by F, uh, F2 turns on this. And if you have it in the other, another form, it does a different dialog box. Um, I like having it hovered on the bottom. Let's just put it there for now. You can go to the home tab to turn it, cue it back on and off. Um, most of your most of your CUI or GUI, I mean, are is up here in Civil 3. You can pop on and off if you lose them or turn them off by accident. The vast majority of all of your GUI and your windows are here. Just FYI. Um, here is your command line, the very last one I did. I'm going to turn it off. Control plus 9 is an alias to do it too. Let's do Control plus 9. Turns it back on. Um, that was the alias I was trying to think of and turn it off. It gives you this little warning. I kind of like it on that one because it's not one that people like to commonly turn off. So it's kind of a nice little trigger. Um, so this is a good segue into our different panels. Tool space. That's most of our home base of all of our Civil 3D design. Prospectors, your, your heavy hitter there. It has all your L Civil 3D objects and what's in the drawing, what is populated. Um, everything from points down to view frame groups of sheets. Uh, your settings tab, that's another one up here. Uh, prospector settings, survey database, and toolbox. All four of them make up to all the, the whole of tool space in this top five. 
this is the deep civil 3d settings that you can go way into the matrix on of hundreds and hundreds of settings of civil 3d styles and commands and uh, which one comes up first um, on all these when you enter a command you can give defaults like uh, if i do a alignment uh, dj and a design alignment is the default one and this style is the default one you can only pick one in most cases but this stuff gets pretty deep all your styles of a given template there's hundreds and hundreds of styles generally for most companies and multiply that by 10 to 12 times of all the settings in each style so thousands of settings hundreds of styles and these are the, just the out of the can basic civil 3d ones that come with your initial stall, install of civil 3d uh, civil 3d styles i'm looking at surface styles um, everything under the sun all the entities in civil 3d every setting you could imagine survey database um, we used to use this a lot more we're not using it as much i'm not going to talk about it a lot because of that we're mostly using trimble business center to process our raw data but we would make survey databases and set working folders much like data shortcuts and kick in points and make things called survey figures which are a lot like feature lines um, they're very keen to feature lines but they're more for existing features and we run them through a figure prefix database and a line work code set i have mdt ones going on right now um, because i have a, a different setup of 2022 right now we'll get to the some of those settings in a minute in our options we're not going to dig any deeper than that which is something we used to utilize we still can but we are utilizing triple business center uh, exclusively for this now which has way more controls for survey related equipment adjustments uh, geomatics all kinds of stuff that frankly the civil 3d survey database doesn't quite have the robustness that Trimble does in this way our toolbox last but not least but we won't use it a lot there's all kinds of crazy reports you can run to kick out CSVs HTMLs Word docs PDFs of very specific data about civil 3d objects from alignments parcels i've used them for alignments a lot i've used them for points i've used them for surfaces to out csvs probably alignments the most and each one of these is very specific to a different need so when someone comes to you asking for a report they're like kick out this exact data it's not always that simple but you'd be surprised some of these do kick out very close to what a lot of people want maybe they just want stations and um and offsets of something to an alignment or they want all the data the curved data of every segment of an alignment this is where you would go to that initially um, these we don't use much miscellaneous utilities have some cool stuff uh, turnout utilities is something i haven't used at this particular company yet but it has been added recent in recent years for rails um, some things interesting things in here in these miscellaneous reports you have even more reports of things like alignments and points and profiles you can dig into here to see how they compare with these reports they're slightly different for profiles on profile views you see the difference so you have some extra reports here um, some kogo points off of surveys this one's a super handy newish one newish command in the last couple of years exporting anything you find in your drawing to a kml file or kmz file so you can open google earth um, a KML file is a keyhole markup language file. A KMZ is a zipped version of it. It can be opened by a lot of mapping and GIS software, not least of which is free Google Earth Pro. This one I use a lot uh, to kick out stuff to Google Earth. So that covers that. I generally like my tool space over here to the right. And I like, you can drag them. I kind of drag them by this edge. And I hold them there and they show that little hidden line that means it gets sucked into the interface i like on this one to hide it down just like so uh, and then when i unhide it i like to have it have a little bit of width so when i get enough features i i can drill down especially with alignments going all the way down to section views i like to have a little width to it um some other things to turn on let's go to the next thing i like on my right hand side is tool palettes which are very unique to uh, Civil 3D, there are assemblies and there's ways to customize them. But these are ones out of the box, uh, mostly for assemblies, making designs like roads and all kinds of stuff. And you can drag and drop said assembly into this drawing. Put it there and start building on it. Okay. 
that's just a cross section of a certain type of road or um, just kind of a common assembly and there's a whole bunch of them here the basic ones are kind of your beginner ones um, if you right click here you can go through a few more of them um, there's ways to go to properties and you could turn a lot more of them on this way I'm not going to go too much into the advanced properties of of the tool palettes. There's ways we can definitely be utilizing them more. Um, that's just a way to turn on one of them at a time. And each one of these has some different deeper assemblies in here. If you go to some of these ones that come straight out of Civil 3D. Uh, I already went to that one. All palettes. That's a way to just turn them all on. And we have some of them like draw, um, our common commands basic assemblies now we're going to the civil 3d assemblies again you can rearrange the the order of these two but i turned on a whole bunch of them now um now you see when i it's kind of weird you gotta go way down here with these little uh cascading however you call it tabs are still remaining and right click look how many i have now to choose from that's after i went here and turned on all palettes, all available palettes. And there's ways we're going to link to some of these that we might make some custom ones in the future. Um, but yeah, this is how I can go to some quickly. And it just cascades me to it. I like to suck this one, grab it here, and pull it to the right, suck it in. And I like to have it auto hide just like my tool uh, space. Kind of a little less so. Just something like this. So they kind of cascade out in about the same width. And I'm kind of setting up my setup to be very adaptable, but also very adaptable for two screens or one screen when I'm on a laptop. It's kind of my favorite thing when I'm on different computers or working remote. I like to have most of my stuff on one screen. Um, I've, I have a lot of things I like, I'll show you in a minute, to drag to a second screen for efficiency. But in general, I like to try to keep my workflow if I'm working remote on a laptop or on my work desktop somewhat similar. And it's a preference of mine. Some people will never change the way they do something, but working remote has kind of changed the way I've thought about that. Properties is the next one. That's one you can also right-click generally if you have any option selected. or Not option, but any entity selected. You can right-click and go to properties this way. If I'm out in space, um, you cannot. There's a lot of right-click options in Civil 3D or AutoCAD that you're probably used to. Um, we're not going to cover too much of those, but generally, if you click nothing and then space, you have your common ones, repeat command and recent commands that I've already run. This one's an add-in. Not going to isolate objects, clipboards for your different copy and paste and cut typical options. Your basic modify tools, display order use those all the time. The typical object in Civil 3D or AutoCAD in general when it comes into a drawing new, its default state is to go to the top. That's just good to know. Um, pan and zoom, So the, and these options we're going to go to next. So the properties, I like to suck those off to the right, just my preference. And this one I like to leave open width. This is about the right width, just because I'm looking at it all the time. And, and it's very common on a lot of programs like Revit, Trimble Business Center or a lot of design programs to have a properties kind of dialog box. When you pick on different entities, it tells you what you've selected. Um, if I drag out a assembly, or we don't have to do an assembly, I went to the architectural items a lot of common blocks in here. We're going to show you some of our blocks, but I went to architectural. I'm going to grab just a fluorescent light and bring it out here, place it. If I grab this fluorescent light, it shows me the properties, block reference, its geometric relationships, scales, XYs, layers. Try to do most things by layer. We're an STB company. We do most things on STBs. I'm not going to argue the merits of CTB to STB. I think STBs are far superior because they're more editable, customizable the way you need them. CTBs just add a little layer of confusion, but that, they're two different drawing types. Most of our drawings are going to be CTB, or excuse me, STB, style-based. 
um, which leads me into our next palette, layers. Um, you can also type layer into the command bar to get this. And this is how you turn it on. This one is a key one. Um, to get really good at AutoCAD, master user, you got to get good with layers. Layers are, are one of the building blocks of everything we do. I like to suck it to the left. And I like to hide this one. This one I like to cascade out pretty far. Bear with me. And everyone has a preference in order when you're in model space. You have different options than when you're in paper space layouts. Model space has generally less. You don't have your viewport options. I, I like on, freeze, lock, plot on, off, color, line type, line weight, transparency. I generally like that order. Just because it's one less thing in description, this is descriptions of the layers. On our template we have, these are pretty key with a lot of our custom DJNA layers. These ones are all our default civil 3D layers in this particular drawing. They generally look like this. When we open our, our template soon, I literally have a longhand description of some of these shorthand layer names so you can kind of say oh that's a that's a DJNA survey or existing fence or whatever this is a good tab to know just to help you navigate well done templates and stuff like this um, and another thing we'll open up our template soon is I like to cascade this about right here I love using these uh, layer group filters they quickly toggle between layers some templates it's nice to have 10 20 layers but with civil 3d and when i build seed templates from start to finish and then branch out other ones i got to keep a lot of these civil 3d layers which there's quite a few of them there's over 200 default ones um, if not a little more in some, certain templates um, i have some ones in the template will show you that i say djna survey or structural we can quickly segregate different layer groupings i have one for djna survey mapping only for example you can make new ones too in auto ones with the filter group filters up here you can make a new group filter or you can make it by properties which is a little bit more of an automatic there's my layers if i go to uh, a paper space tab which is a really basic one they change so i got viewport options um, to manipulate each viewport so i got my on my freeze on is generally for temporary turning things on and off don't save it just do it temporary for it. freeze is more permanent takes it out of the database now we have viewport freeze i love having this one third because viewport freeze is used so much in different viewports lock so that's the only slight wrinkle in the in the paper space tabs i like that having that one there lock plot on not plot or non-plot color and um, I like putting these ones at the end, these viewport override ones, just for particular viewports. And I like having them in the same order. Um, I, I don't have to get too anal with this. I like having tran transparency, which is how something is visually transparent. So zero would be opaque. 99 would be just about invisible. Uh, for example, 100 would be invisible. Um, no fully transparent like glass not opaque at all so what we got we have color line type line weight might be a little off but I try to get these in the same order so it's just kind of muscle memory so color line type line weight transparency so we'll just do the same we'll do color line type line weight transparency but these are for the viewports only lots of handy commands like when you go into a viewport you can right click a particular layer and freeze three freeze it in all viewports when it comes in new or just one except current or you can thaw it in the same manner and there's some other things called viewport overrides and layer states not in the scope of this video but layers are powerful they're, they're the way to get you to a high level of usage and efficiency in autocad the next palette, I like to turn on the design center. I just kind of skipped over this one. This one is a way to bring in um, objects from other drawings. Um, civil, th not civil 3D objects, but AutoCAD objects. It's kind of being a little slow right now. 
there it finally went. I had to kind of give it a second before it crashed. Um, not always typical, but um, yeah, the more you use Civil 3D or open a variety of drawings, you will find the most creative ways to make it crash sometimes. It's just kind of part of the, the day to day. Um, Design Center. So this is a way to bring in AutoCAD objects, really more AutoCAD based objects into between drawing to drawing from a source to a destination. Um, I'm going to bring us over here to our left, our file tree. I like to set a home base. Very few people know how to use this. This is actually kind of a hidden gem. Um, it's a little tricky. Um, most of my CAD standards are on the cloud right now. Let's see if I can do this. So we have the CAD standards still in the F drive, F drive. They're about to go away and only be on the cloud, CAD standards. And we have templates. And this is where we want to go to our, our base templates. And we want to link our home base to one of these template folders and say set to home. So when we open up Design Center, it goes to a default location we like. We can go to any project file anywhere, like it's saying the F drive, whatever project you want to pull stuff from. Um, for example, let's just pick um, one I just recently worked on. And I, I have a blank drawing and I want to bring in some other stuff quickly. Um, I'm not going to do too much of it because I don't want to crash this as I'm doing it, but I'll just navigate to this one exact project. Um, and I have a few drawings in here. Let me just pick one of them. And here's all the stuff we can import. Blocks from this particular drawing into this drawing. So this is our source drawing. We can bring in any layer. I like to go to the right click, view, details. Um, so our different layers or text styles. We have some weird MDT ones in here. And what you can do is grab them with control, data click and drag. Look at the, for that little symbol, that little rectangle symbol. Same with bringing in Civil 3 styles sing, singularly. That shows that it's uh, coming in. This is not a big deal. Just turn that command off. Warning you just saw. Uh, big one, I'll use it is for blocks. If you click on blocks, these can actually take a, a minute. I'll probably hit cancel. This is the one that can go a little slow. There's 400 and some blocks in this particular MDT drawing. Some of them get from God knows where. Some are maybe ones I, I want just from a particular job or from a client or whatever reason. Um, we have over 170 or so in the main our main default templates. This one has a, a pile more because it has a bunch of MDT Department of Transportation ones. Um, I'm going to hit cancel. Um, if you hit cancel, it will take you to them right here. This is this one I would maybe show as a large view so you can see the icons and the the visual of most of the blocks, some of them don't cooperate the same. This one's a good one to turn in that method. You can bring in line types. Um, a big caveat about this, if you have said whatever line type of this exact type in this drawing, this source drawing, or destination drawing, and you're trying to take this one from the source, it will not overwrite the one in your destination. It's it's a really pain in the pain in the butt thing with AutoCAD. I don't know why it doesn't allow you to overwrite. Civil 3D styles do that. They let you um, overwrite if you choose to. It seems the smart option. So it's a bummer when you got a really ugly, messy drawing. You have a lot of things that are the same name. So essentially, if it has the same name in the destination drawing, if you're copy pasting the same name entity from the source drawing it will not overwrite it and it's a big pain in the butt um, you can bring in this is a huge one layout tabs entire paper, paper space layout tabs and viewports I'm going to attempt to bring in one give it a second this one you've got to be really patient with see how that populated and release release data click here we go we got a new layout tab from this MDT job it is brought in let me minimize that boom um, that's just one handy thing, probably one of the best things to use this for. Um, Multi-leader styles or M-leaders, dim styles, all very AutoCAD-based stuff. Visual styles, which I don't use a lot, but you could. Not These are the same things you would have in an install of regular AutoCAD. Everything, everything you see here. Um, not particular to Civil 3D. I like to, now, the last thing I like to set a home base for this. I'm going to pause quick and go find home base. I said it used to be in the F drive CAD standards. That's about to go away through here. 
there's some workabouts. This is a little tricky to get to path of home base to the cloud. Um, one way you can go through, most of the time when you guys are going to sync your cloud settings, and we'll go to in a second, through the main DJNA PC channel. Here's the CAD standards on the cloud through SharePoint. I like syncing the whole DJNA PC, or you can just sync the cloud standards folder. It's up to you. That's where it's very user-based to sync what you want. Your, your cloud or your SharePoint with DJNA will sync with your C drive, or if you have multiple drives, most of you it's going to be your C drive. And so you could trick it to go through there um, through the C drive. I'm going to go slow for this part because it is a little tricky, and this is a way to get to your home base here. So go to your C drive. This is once you're synced, once you have your ca your cloud-based cl CAD standard sync. C drive, users, uh, go to yourself, likely in this case. Go to OneDrive's one way, but I'm going to go a different way. Let's accordion that down. Once you get to users, go to the sync folders of your entire enterprise. That's DJ and APC. Here's all the synced mother level folders I've uh, synced to active projects, potential projects. The main DJ and APC, that's where the CAD centers are, my particular CAD user group in the survey department. Um, we got to go here. This gets a little deep, I know. DJ and CAD standards and templates. There might be there's some Revit ones in here too, but I'm going to say this is my home base. Set as home. So it'll always go here when I come back. And then I can drag and drop from preferred templates like this. If you have a different spot you want to go to, please do. I'm going to drag this to the right. And I like the design center cascaded down because it's really wide. But when you hover on it, it gets wide like this and it goes to the AutoCAD drawings you want. So if I go to one of our core templates, it has all of our default Civil 3D stuff. This is pretty handy for dragging into older drawings. Um, your layers, layout tabs particularly, our default DJNA ones for survey. All right, so that's the design center. I just did a zoom all to this layout tab. The last couple property boxes or GUI boxes I like to have on in my palettes are a couple really common ones. External references manager. You can also type in XREF or XR. Turn that one on. I love having this one to the right. This is all my external files I can link. Let it suck in. I'm going to cascade it down. It automatically sucks in. I'm going to make the width a little wider. Just so I can read out file pathings. Um, one of the big keys in here is different types of files. DWGs, images, anything from a PNG, JPEG, TIFF, ECW, DWFs we're not going to use a lot. They're like the PDF version of AutoCAD. DGNs, microstation files, those do attach really nice compared to how they used to. Um, instead of bringing in a DGN, you can uh, externally reference one in. They don't, it works a lot better than it used to. PDFs is very common. Point cloud's not too common anymore. Um, one thing when you're attaching a PDF, one of the biggest things, um, if I just find any said drawing, pause it quick, and I got to a drawing. I'm going to attach a drawing by hitting open. One of the critical things, I should do this in model space, but just for purposes, some of the biggest things, relative file path. It's huge. So when you move it to different file locations for whatever reason, you can't foresee these things, it keeps the pathing relative, not absolute. That's huge. I generally scale it. I always at one. I say specify on the screen. I usually do it at zero zero zero, but this gives me control. You paste an XREF in at zero zero zero, so it's a common reference point. This is the biggest one. Almost always do an overlay. Overlays come in with the XREF. If there's things inside of that XREF, it doesn't bring everything else in nested. Attachments. If you have things within a drawing, within a drawing, it'll bring everything in. Um, if you come to a project where that's the case, sometimes the project's too far along, you got to leave it as is because you're going to blow up 
all the attachments because someone kind of was sloppy along the way. There's times where attachments can be used when you don't want to bring in three or four different drawings with overlay, but generally overlay 90 plus percent of the time um, is the way to go. And it brings in drawings cleaner without nested objects. Um, in MicroStation world, it'd be called bringing in nested drawings or not. So generally do an overlay and hit OK, but I'm going to hit cancel here. Um, turn off Teams in just a second, but I need to show you some file pathing. And the last sheet I'm going to bring up that I want to say permanently is going to be the Sheet Set Manager. Or you can type in Sheet Set. This is how you print sheet sets. Uh, it's gotten a lot better. Printing is one of the quagmires of AutoCAD, but it's definitely good if you've got good setups and good templates. So that's if I open up a sheet set. Um, there's some recent ones. This is just some example junk one um, that I don't even have the location. They're, they're called DST, DST files. Um, generally, they're going to be within your project, near your project. So there we go with that. Um, a few other things on our palettes here. Oops, I turned off one. If you turn them on and off, they will come back on in their same spot. You need to close AutoCAD to save your graphic user interface. It doesn't save all the settings automatically unless you go deep in the settings to do that. You need to close it down without crashing to maintain this section, this session of this, this exact version of Civil 3D 2022, all the things we just did here and set up the way we like, your toolbars, your ribbons, everything. Um, I'm not going to do that for now, but just make sure you don't crash before you've done all this hard work. Here it shows I'm logged in. Don't forget to log in. This is my educational account. You're going to log in a DJNA user with Shane's email and his password. I'm not going to say in this video, so we don't have other people using it that we don't want to, but get that email and password for Shane at DJNA.com. That's one of the main things our licensing depends on. It's called the name user system. Once in a while, you can't get into CAD, you'll see some license issues. 100% of the time, almost, it's either you got to restart CAD or you need to re-log back in. It's usually that simple, one of those two items. Um, that's where to check if you're logged in. It will generally not let you get very far in your drawing if you're not logged in. Um, and it might also ask you to log in when your internet browsers with the Autodesk site. I'm already logged in in this case. Um, here we have some different settings. I could save this whole workspace as a very particular one. and leave it here. I can always go back to it if I screw up something and it's my go back to snapshot in time. Here's our quick tools area. Um, it, these ones default, open, new, save, save as mobile device, print, undo, redo. This is your one of your best friends. Lots of undo commands if you're familiar with Civil 3D. They like to populate them like it's a fun game. Um, it's something they still do every time you do a pan or a zoom, it populates them. This is how you can go through them really quick, though. And it undoes like 50 commands. Um, I like to leave all those on, but I like to turn on a whole bunch of them. Honestly, I turn on most of them. And you might not do this, but plot preview. A lot of these commands I type in the aliases because I've used cat a lot. Um, and some of these are repetitive, but one big one here. That's, most of these have aliases you can type in, but this is this one included to turn the menu bar on. Some people are in love with the menu bar because they got they learned CAD in the mid 2000s or 90s, and they still kind of know how to find commands in the menu bar fashion. I still remember quite a few of them, but I've kind of gone to the ribbon almost fully by this point over the years. So similar setups, but they're way more segregated into different groups than the ribbon. I generally turn it off because um, it kind of conflicts me looking at the ribbon and both. Some of the commands are not in the ribbon that are on here, but the mo most part they all are. So I'm going to turn this. That's a kind of a blanket statement, but in general, it's, in general it's true. So there we go. Hide the menu bar. I have a couple toolbars I like, 
And the last area of my main usage screen is to go to the hamburger button for my tray options. I like turning almost all these on. The only one I might not turn on, um, I'm not even seeing here, it's called the gizmo. I don't really use that one. Um, I generally use almost every one of these at some point or another. I'm not going to go ever over every one of them. They all kind of are intricate in their own way. But it's a quick way to go to common settings and drafting properties in AutoCAD throughout here. A big one is to go, say, into a viewport and lock it, for example. I'll just give you one. Um, you might go into a viewport this way, and it's locked. Now it's not locked. Now it's a different scale. Um, that's a pretty common one. Uh, another common locked one, let me hit type paper space or d double left data click into paper space does the same thing. Brings, brings me into this paper space. Uh, I could lock all my custom user interface uh, this way. I might say everything is locked and docked. Um, that was not the right one for that. But this is to go between floating and docking. Um, so now it's all locked and I can't do anything. So I'm going to turn that off so I can go back to manipulating. I like having some mobility on these. I don't like locking them fully. So play around with locking your interface there. Um, I like having almost all the commands on. We got our layout tabs and we're now we're ready for some options. So let me go to model space. This is a big one. It's changed this year at DJNA and it, it's a source of a lot of confusion, um, so I'll try to go through it slow. But the first things first, you need to go to, you can do it through uh, Teams. My Teams isn't running very well through my app at the moment. Or you could do it through uh, Internet Browser, SharePoint. But you need to sync to the correct folders um, first to access the CAD standards, just like you would for the Active Drive. So I'm on a DJNA machine. Let me cascade a few things. Here's your SharePoint Enterprise area. I have a similar one for AutoCAD, but these are the main header folders I have synced to. Big preference on different ways to do this, depending on your usage of projects, which ones you go to, but I strategically put the CAD standards in a very high level one that almost everyone uses, the DJNA PC header. Don't mind the documentos I have a, a Spanish setting on right now, but you get the gist. So if I go to this, this is the folder we're after. You could sync, to drill down to this folder to sync to this one. I generally would recommend syncing to this mother folder because a lot of this stuff is company-wide things we're all, all utilizing in some capacity. CAD standards being one most of us as well. So... One way to do it through SharePoint is to go to your internet browser, browse to the said team. Um, you can go here to home, my sites. I, I've already kind of gone to it, this particular team. And you have to go to documents. Or we could start from the beginning. Um, we're on this particular team that pretty much all of us are in. Go to documents. Okay, I'm in the mother folder. This is if you want to sync, and it shows I'm already synced to it, but you got to hit sync here, be signed into your SharePoint account, um, be watching that you're, sh you're on your tray here, you're signed in with this taskbar tray option. Um, make sure you're signed in and everything's working. Maybe restart your computer if you're not, but this is the folder I would prefer to sync to. So start with that, and once they're synced, You'll see the status bar, go through your cloud enterprise, and it should be syncing. Um, you can bring in other things um, and say I was on this machine or not, but generally uh, I'm not messing with that right now. Most of our templates are here. Um, those settings, which we're about to go to, are in the SharePoint cloud. So yours will probably go to your C drive, DJNA, DJNA PC, documents, CAD standards, settings, AutoCAD, civil 3D settings are one thing, but this is the one we want to go to here. 
I'll put these in the old folder as needed, but this is our home base here for our options in case Shane should do most of these for you. But these are our key options. And this first, and they're generally media files. The second one has showing you how to add these options with Braden's um, user name. And they go through step by step in your options, adding each one of these. We'll do a little bit of that. The very first one, though, is telling you to sync. This is a, a little bit of an artistic rendering. If you went through, um, I just went through an internet browser in SharePoint, this would be going through Teams. So get your team here, go there. I say sync the whole folder, or you could sync just the CAD standards. Got to go to Files, then Documents, slightly different pathing, and then Sync to get this whole folder. You do the same if you want to drill down to just this folder to sync just that one. It's up to you. But this is the way to start it, get syncing. Um, and then we're going to start copy-pasting in some of these. I'm going to speed this part up. Here's our printer pathings. No more 64-bit folder. Make sure of that. That's been a common problem. Our template one and our tool palettes. These are our three big ones. And it goes through various options. Some you might prefer not to do. Some maybe. I try to highlight the more important ones. Let's start putting those into Civil 3D. So in that same folder, Documents, CAD Standards, Settings, AutoCAD, all options, there's this Word doc that simulates the folder. In this case, it's Braden's, but you just take most of these, copy them, and switch out your name. It's one way. Um, Use it if you want. These are your main ones, your support files, your printers, your templates, and your tool palettes. Try that if you would like. Or you could navigate your machine. I'm going to leave one of these windows open to its location. CAD standards. Mine is on a separate drive, but yours is probably going to be the C drive. It's syncing. Get syncing first, restart your CAD, all that. This is one I know, the templates I'm going to have to copy many times. I might copy this path. I know I want to, I want to go to this, this drawing particularly right here. Survey. Most of you will go to this one as your default template. So I'm going to simulate that. Um, right now and another way too is to you can select it I'm in my Windows Explorer and you can copy the path entirely this way so select the file um, there's ways to right click and do the same I'm just checking if I missed anything so this copied the pathing to it and you have to have this cascaded open you might have it hidden here your general Windows folder options, this file. So I'm not going to go through every one of these because it'll take a while, but hopefully Shane did most of these for you. Generally right click and go to options, or you can type in options in your command bar. Um, it takes you to this dialog box. You can go up this way too in your application menu, which I didn't really talk about. This one's a very big one. You can go this way. Shows you your recent drawings, new, open, save as. A lot of these commands that you have in the quick tray, um, you're going to use these a lot. Publish and print, and drawing utilities. This one you're going to use a fair amount to change your coordinate system, and drawing settings, depending on where you are, and audit and recover um, to fix corrupted drawings. Um, recover can only be accessed as you're opening a drawing. This is a way to open it, open audit it, or open recover it. You have to, it will ask you to open a drawing now. Audit's like doing that, but while you're in said drawing. It'll audit the integrity and try to fix this drawing with errors. Um, let's go to options. Generally, these are the main ones. Support file path. 
This one's a little trickier. I go to the bottom one, I say add. And this is the one where it helps to go to this folder. You can take a look at the steps. Templates, CAD standards, font support. So this one is not a fun one to do, but I generally add four, four lines. I'm going to skip ahead to that. When you're pasting in, make sure you don't have these little quotation marks. So sometimes those like to come with. Be careful of that. Just make sure you have the full pathing of whatever you're doing to, to match these images in this folder. So here I added my four. I did add on each one, new ones, and my support files. This one I hope Shane does for you. This one's a little bit time consuming. Um, it's kind of just a standard catch-all to bring to our base folders. Um, if you do add a new one, you can go through the browse instead of copy pasting. It's a little little more work possibly. Um, you have to go to your DJNA Enterprise, to the CAD standards the templates or support two or there's a fonts one as well and then there's a base one so that might be quicker but here they are let's go on to the next one so here they are in that there I'm just saying add your own unique one here that one has Braden's for example the next big ones will be our printer support file path and our template settings so let's do some copy pasting there So the printer support file path, you don't generally need all four. I just do all four. They've proven to work pretty well. We don't need to worry about the 64-bit folder anymore. That one is still throwing people off. I got to leave them literally there so people can plot. They're, it's kind of an old thing. Um, I like having my Windows Explorer open for this part. Just go to plot styles. This is generally the path for all of them. Let's confer that with our image. Yourself, user, whoever your name is, DJNA, team, documents, CAD standards, plot styles, all four of them. Paste. Double click it slow. A little tricky. It's my preferred method than having to browse to each one. Click it a second time slow. Turns blue. Paste. Those are done, all four of them to the same spot. I like to do an auto save file location. This is totally your preference. Um, I have a spot that links up with my, I find that this one works better. You can put it to the cloud somewhere. I have a, a local location though. It seems to work a little better um, with, test it out, but that's just been my two cents. I'll go to browse, Let's see if I can find it. I'll just skip ahead to that. So I have one on my cloud, you know, through DJNA. This is your cloud personal. This is your cloud enterprise. I just literally have one to my hard drive, my C drive, and a, a high-level folder. Um, you can put it wherever you want, your desktop. I like to keep it on my local machine. It seems to work better. There it is. I love having autosave. It saves, it saves my butt all the time. I put it every 10 minutes. Um, up to you. Bigger drawings sometimes will bog down if they have to save every 10 minutes. Turn it on and off if you need to. Don't be scared to try different ways on that one. Go to templates is the next big one. Okay, let me go to the image. And those are generally here. We have four main templates. We have um, a DJNA survey, a DJNA regular, which is like engineering, and we have the same but for MPS, survey and design or engineering. And we're basically going to go to a location, a location, and then these last two, default for QNew and default for a sheet creation page setup overrides, which is actually helpful. Those help you plot. These you need. These last two, you need to go to a particular exact DWT file. That's a drawing template file, DWT. These two are a general folder location. These two, pick one of the two. So I'll show you what that means in a second. 
Let's open all four. One, two, three, four. Um, probably just easiest to have Windows Explorer open on this one. Remember, you're synced to the cloud CAD standards. Um, the templates are here. Revit and Civil 3D. This is Civil 3D 2018 and above. Anything up to 2023 at this point. Here's the mother folder. This is the one I first copy. And I want my default one to be this one. You might not need the extra survey layouts. I sometimes need them. These are very similar templates. If you picked either one, you can't really go wrong. This one just has more survey stuff, more survey layouts. So if you don't do any survey drawings, pick this one. If you do only MPS drawings, consider picking one of these. But I generally would say pick one of these two as your base template. Um, maybe to speed this up, let's grab the file path of, of one of them and I'll give you a trick here. Let's paste in this first one. This is going to a location, so not an exact file. Let's, let's take this down to that folder. Oops, I forgot to take the parentheses off. Make sure you take the parentheses off. There we go. I'm going to use this again. Say copy. It's a nice, neat one. That one's to the folder. These two are going to be to an exact file. I want that exact DWT file to be my mother template. Now it's getting updated in the cloud. It's not in your machine anymore. It's not bogged down by the F drive when, you, when you're working in another state. This cloud system has its difficulties, but it's definitely a more scalable option for our bigger amount of employees in different offices now. Paste. This is the second one that goes to the folder location, mother folder. So we got all four of those done. Remember, mine's particular to my machine. I have two hard drives, a D drive. Most of you will have a C drive that this stuff goes to with your cloud syncing. And that's just about it, our last main one. There's other ones too, but there's our tool palettes location. So we have some default ones, and these are fine to leave alone. We're gonna mess with these more later, but uh, as we develop more custom ones. For now, we're gonna leave this app, app data one. Let's see what I have here. Leave this one. Leave this default one that goes to your installs of tool palettes. This one's generally one you want. And I'm gonna leave this one too, honestly. Um, this is a new one I haven't seen a lot of. Let's. I'm just gonna add one. And I'm gonna add our custom location, which is essentially right here to our Cloud CAD standards tool palettes mother folder. So let's go to our Windows Explorer one last time for this stuff. Go up a folder, two palettes. And there's custom ones in here we can tweak. They're XTP files, amongst other things. Let's copy this pathing. You can do it this way or this way, but that'll have the parentheses. We're going to add one here. Let's hit apply just to suck all these in. And let's start going to our other options. So move on down to these ones. These ones should generally be good to go. I, I like it on dark mode. Um, I'll toggle between these two, between my, my um, folder with all the settings, the image, this is the one I'm on, and Civil 3D. So let's toggle between the two. Check these out. I'll fast forward here in the video. These ones are all generally good as is. Um, I like my crosshair to go across the screen as a preference so I can line things up. So it fills the entire screen you'll see in a sec. Um, if I hit OK, my crosshair goes across the whole screen. So right click, go back to options. I like that, but uh, that's one of the only things I switch around here. These ones are nice to mess with how faded back XREFs look when, they, when they're edited. These can be a uh, user preference. Generally, I would leave most of these alone. Um, if you like a lighter mode, I like a dark mode for my eyes. Open, this one has a few settings. We'll cascade to the next area. 
we want to put our output device. Do not put Bluebeam PDF, please. Um, Bluebeam is a great program, but a PDF is the same to all programs, essentially. So if you're going to pick one, pick DWG to PDF. You could also do Adobe PC. Uh, but this is our general one of templates set up all around. It's a very basic, universal, well-working, old-school uh, DWG to PDF printer configuration file. We may change this in the future, but this is the one for now. Um, if you do Bluebeam PDF, if other people come to your drawing, and not everyone has Bluebeam, it won't print. So one of the main reasons not to use Bluebeam, even though Bluebeam is a great program for taking and editing PDFs, make sure you don't use it here. Um, this is a plot file location. Um, it stores a Word doc of all the plots you ever do of all time. I don't care about this. I turn it off. Um, I don't like it populating, really. So I turn it off by hitting that toggle radio button off. Otherwise, these will plots, and it's not a big deal. I turn this off. I don't like automatic publish. I like to be able to control when I publish. These ones are big ones. I like to turn these both on so that the plots go off in the background. You can watch them um, on a little icon down here. It's not on because I'm not plotting. And you can hover on it, and it'll say where your plot job is. But it won't hog your whole screen real estate. It'll let you continue working while that goes off. Um, I skipped one here, but we're going here. So here... We're going to change that to DWG to PDF. I'm not going to worry about this. I'm going to turn both so it plots in the background. These are pretty critical ones. They'll save you a lot of time. I don't like that having that pop, pop, excuse me, publish file. It doesn't really do me any good. Uh, what other settings in here? Hide system printers. Printable area. Most of these on this side are the way you want it. Always alert, log errors. Select, and some of these I haven't fished every single instance out. These are generally good. Open and save, I'll go back to this one. I generally keep automatic save on. I do it every 10 minutes. You can change this to whatever you want, turn it off. Don't be scared to try it. I have saved countless hours, probably at least every week when I'm doing a lot of drafting, I've saved, saved an hour of my time um, from a crash. This, make sure it's stayed on this version of Civil 3D 2018. Um, nothing really else to change here. This is the max amount of previously open files. I wish it could have more, but nine. I generally like having that full. Generally leave most of this alone. We'll skip pot. We just did this one. System. This one's a big one. Cache, model, tab, and all layouts. This stores and caches in your memory. Um, when you go between different layout tabs, it really speeds you up going between the different layouts. Tab. Once you've been in a layout tab and you go back to it, it's really sped up. That's a big one. Big uh, boost to your CAD speed. Um, automatically check for certificate update. That should usually be on. And then these two. Go to the next one. User preferences. I don't have any extras on that really. This one's good to go. Feel free to explore some of these, but be a little careful. You know, do one thing at a time. Experiment one thing at a time. I don't like turning my apertures up much. Um, you can change different colors. Sometimes I change my cursors to orange or purple. Sometimes I change my command bar text to red or something. This is where you can change some of this stuff um, on your snaps. I generally leave everything alone in here. You can compare it. But this is a good home base to make sure. AutoCAD does a pretty good job of setting you up with pretty good default settings. On to 3D modeling. We shouldn't have to mess with any of these. Um, we're actually just going to skip that one. This one, the next one on display, we're going to go back here. Um, I said don't change much on this. I changed the crosshair size and maybe if you want your XREFs to be faded more. Um, but I do like changing a few colors in my user interface. One big one is I like my paper space sheet layouts to be uniform black. I'll show you why in just a sec. Um, it's a bit deep, but you can change almost any color of the graphic user's interface in here. You can get pretty deep or the fonts. <clears throat> change it black, hit apply and close. When you hit OK, it applies it automatically like anything. 
when I go to this sheet, cover sheet now, I like looking at this black. I like the gray to distinguish my printable area from my paper space. But generally, this is a lot easier to look at. You can leave it white if you want. With certain yellow lines and stuff, it gets really hard to look at, though, with the contrast. This is a lot easier. And I generally will save my printing, though, to check it and how it looks in printing mode with a print preview. So I'll type in preview, or pre for short, or you can go up here, print, and we'll say, do not ask again, but yes, I want to continue a shingle, single sheet. I don't like seeing that one. Um, this one doesn't have all the right settings. I got to restart uh, my Civil 3D to accept some settings. But this is how I might do a preview and check what it looks like. This will be kind of all over the place. It should be in black and white. This one, I don't have my plot styles. I just linked them. I need to restart CAD. But this is where I would see how it would print to PDF in my print preview. 100% this is when I'm ready to do that. Or I, I print the PDF and look at it. But in everyday drafting and paper space, I prefer black here. It's a big preference, but I think most people do like that. Model space, I like leaving this black anyway. Um, a lot of programs like Revit, it's typically white modeling area. I'm, I prefer black. Selection, you should have to basically leave most of these alone. You can sometimes change your pick box and grip sizes. So when you, anything that's grip editable, maybe you like those bigger or your pick box sizes, those are maybe two easy ones to edit. And your AEC editor, this generally won't change much either. Let's go to that. There's ways to save profiles. Um, that's a bit more of an advanced thing we won't do on this video. AEC editor. So there is some options on here that could be strategic, but I generally would leave these alone. I turn this one on or off, depending sometimes. Um, it doesn't hurt to leave it on. Okay, at this point, I want to save all my stuff um, and get your vehicle tractor installed so it shows up up here. And other, other add-ins you like to use, like I use CloudWorks and Super Purge to clean out drawings. Info Drainage is a new feature. I use SyncPack for survey calcs. Um, InfraWorks is a newish program. It links up Civil 3D with a lot of databases. Um, one other new one, and we're not going to use it much. Uh, there's some, you have to have a certain version installed. It's kind of buggy, is Map Connect. Um, that one is not through the tool palettes. It's a little deeper. It's like it connects to databases, um, streaming data services. If I go to Map Connect, I have to type it in this way. It is a service you can add, and there's instructions our GIS department has with, for example, adding an aerial from the city of Missoula. It's a way to add different streaming data. It's not embedded. It's streaming from the web somewhere. If I said it generally somewhat correct, I hope. Um, or different databases out there you can link to through URLs and other things. So this is a handy one, but make sure you get with the GIS department and Shane to make sure you have the most current updates of Civil 3D 2022. We've seen some errors with this one. Um, or not, just use insert aerials your typical way through the XREF manager. But that's a new service we've been playing with too. So I'm going to restart Civil 3D real quick, close this out. I'll save this drawing sure somewhere just for fun. And I'm going to reopen it. Um, I have a couple versions. I have one with MDT, which they have their own setup, which is a little tricky with 2022. This is 2023 now, the year we're in. But you have to be kind of careful with that one. Uh, this is my settings. I was just changing. I'm generally going to use Civil 3D 2022 Imperial. Get that going. As it opens up, you're going to see some changes. It's finding the template you chose. And that'll be a video for another time. Digging into the template and various things that we're improving with it and adding and making offshoots of it for different agencies or uh, different departments. So it'll go to that template. It's taking a minute. If you're going to have problems with AutoCAD, a lot of times it does happen in the startup. It gets really buggy. That's where you might have to reset it again. Um, And this is also the time that it will demand you to be logged in to your named user, which will be Shane's username with our company licenses. 
get with him on that username and password have it memorized all right my civil 3d 2022 full settings options everything user interface reopened so all the stuff i like is in place all the user interface is just how i like it i have it saved in my the one i like i have all my options i have my template opened up when i go to plot it should access all my files which is stbs in this case my uh, printer configuration files have all been set in my options. These are all good. Um, in these templates, they have what's called, there's quite a few. Um, I've eliminated a lot for the non-survey one, but these are our main ones, our DJNA page setups. They, they dial everything in um, from how it plots, what pen style it has. These are the ones we pick. So 11 by 17 DJ PDF. PDF. We're mostly doing PDFs these days. Sometimes it turns off. It's weird. Um, it usually should stick, but my 2022 kind of glitches out. So if I pick, I'd pick a different one for a different sheet, but the template's all set up like that. So those page setups are already good to go. So this is for a ARCD or ANSI D, depending on how big your margins are. Um, has our typical blocks with those title blocks. And we have a model space, 40 scale, sandbox area you can pluck stuff from i'm going to go different ways with this maybe in the future to tool palettes and stuff more but this is to get people really familiar with all of our styles our autocad styles um and there's the same one and the dgna 20 uh, 11 by 17 in paper space so everything's out of one one scale for paper space sizing the ones in model space are model space scale of 40. We have annotative objects for almost everything um, from M liters. We have an annotative option for dimensions, uh, for text, and we have an annotative option for M liters as well. Um, sorry, I'm in the wrong one right here. So annotative M liters, tables, M text, and dims are a little tricky, not in this video. We'll talk, talk about it more. They, you got to toggle with these settings. You have to give them uh, sizes, but just an intro to the template in basic fashion here. This one has all the tabs for COSs and survey here on the end, but it also has all the ones for us engineers as well. And US Forest Service ones that are now merged with our DJNA ones. Um, we have our typical DJNA ones of all the sizes possible. Very typical, 11 by 17, C size, arc C. 18 by 24, ANSI D and ARC D, 8.5 by 11, 8.5 by 14 legal. Um, we have our US Forest Service ones of common layout next. Typical Forest Service cover page, which also doubles up as our DJNA typical cover page. We also have, and we'll do a, a deeper video on this on the template next time. This is just a quick start. This one we'll probably do away with at some point, but we're keeping for one Forest Service region. It's an alternative cover page. And we have uh, our typical DJNA plan and profile starter sheet and cross sections for DJNA. And we have same ones for Forest Service. So our Forest Service templates very similar with similar size fonts, text, all kinds of styles, leaders. It took quite an effort to get them all kind of merged. Um, and our cross sections are very similar, but slightly more to the US Forest Service look. Um, legends and notes and these could be transplanted to other areas you could also use excel sheets instead of autocad tables i probably prefer that myself and details beginning sheets and cos's so these these are more survey specific for record surveys and certificates of survey but that's just kind of a start um what else that's just about it of getting going your design center is now set up to its home tab. Brings you right to the templates you want. Um, what else do we have here? We have all of our layers in this template and our group layer group filters. These can always be edited over time, but all of our uh, architectural layers, um, let me try to get through that command. So I just picked the structural engineering. We have our 20 some structural layers, transportation, it's a lot of civil 3D, survey mapping layers only. So 
the PTS points layers and all of our V mapping layers possible under the sun. Civil engineering all, or we can do civil engineering and you can modify these. Uh, it's 2D design site and road. These are a lot of our custom ones. Line types, all of our symbology of the color, line type, line weight, and transparency is all set. If you go to the end, this is where this one kind of comes in handy that I like to pull over here. Forgot to do this on setting up my user interface. I like to pull this way over here. It gives me a description of these layers. These are custom layers. They say exactly what this is. DJNA, for example, design outer construction limit extents. Design fence or gate. Some of them are self-explanatory because the layer speaks for itself. But there's other ones that this description can help you out a lot um, to fully flesh out what that layer is. Any default out-of-the-box-ish Civil 3D ones have this look to them. They say Civil 3D in front of them. Whatever area we can cascade by description to kind of emphasize that. Um, Here's all of our Civil 3D1 and all of our DJNA custom ones for um, 2D design, site, and road. These are called layer filter groups, and they're very useful. And that's all about it to start on Civil 3D, a good intro to a little bit of everything and installing it and getting it, getting it going on the right foot.